todo el mundo hablando del 3 y Atlas, todo el mundo hablando de los artículos, de los informes de AB Loeb, al que una vez más tenemos en esta casa, un medio español, sí, Negocios Televisión, entrevistando a AB Loeb. AB, thanks for being here in Negocios TV, it's a pleasure having you here again, thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having me, it's a great pleasure. Avi, uh, I would like to ask you about uh, your last interview. You said that the three of Atlas doesn't appear to be an ordinary comet. Could you explain it in, in detail, please? Yeah, the most interesting information is from the last uh, few days. It passed near the sun on October 29th, and there seemed to be seven jets coming out of it, according to the latest images. And uh, these jets propagate a distance of up to a few million kilometers, And uh, that means that they were able to penetrate through the solar wind because some of them are going towards the sun. And I calculated that the amount of mass carried by these jets is uh, five billion tons. It's a lot of mass. And uh, that's in case this object is natural, uh, in which case the jets are produced by pockets of ice, either carbon dioxide ice or water ice. But in that case, in order to get so much mass coming out, the area needs to be very large of uh, an object uh, bigger than 20 kilometers in diameter. And that is difficult to accommodate with early data that we had on 3i Atlas. So one way to get a large area is if the object broke up into pieces so that the area is much bigger when you sum up over all the pieces. So in the case of a natural object, maybe it uh, disintegrated. Maybe there were some fireworks next to the sun a week ago, and we will find out very soon because these fragments will get separated by the tidal gravitational field of the sun. So the sun uh, acts gravitationally differently on the different fragments, and they will separate. Uh, however, if it's a technological object, it could be that the jets are used for propulsion, that these are thrusters. And we know that technological jets uh, have a speed, usually of uh, the gas that comes out of them, that is much larger than expected for a natural comet by one to two orders of magnitude for human-made technologies. And if we, are, we have some alien technologies here, it could be even larger. So in that case, the speed of the jets would be uh, much larger than expected, and it will carry much less mass. Uh, the fuel has to be a small fraction of the mass of the spacecraft. So uh, there is a clear test in the coming weeks for us to uh, study those jets, figure out their speed, composition, uh, the mass that they carry, and from that we will learn whether it's a natural comet or something technological. Uh, originally, the anomalies of uh, Three Atlas uh, were that it was very big already. We knew that from the start, a million times more massive than the first interstellar object, and that was surprising. Why are we getting such a big delivery uh, in the third object? We should have uh, obtained such a big object maybe once per 10,000 years. But another anomaly was the trajectory, which was aligned with uh, the orbital plane of the planets around the sun. And uh, we will find the answer to the fundamental question, is it technological? Was this trajectory designed by some intelligence? Or is it a natural object that happens to be very rare and unusual relative to the rocks that we would have expected? And the answer will come in the coming weeks. It will get closest to Earth on December 19th. Uh, and that's just six days before Christmas. And uh, my hope is that it will not deliver any unwanted gifts to us on Earth for the holidays. Well, maybe uh, worrying for this uh, 19th of December, uh, I would like to ask you about uh, some critics. Uh, there are some people saying that the extraterrestrial technology hypothesis is so premature. Uh, what is your argument uh, for, for these people? Well, we need to decide whether it's natural or technological based on the data. And uh, we just had circumstantial evidence until uh, uh, now and we need to wait for the coming weeks. I am not saying it's one or the other. It's most likely a natural comet, but we need to check to make sure. 
uh, because otherwise it could be some uh, black swan event that is unlikely, but nevertheless uh, surprising. Uh, and uh, you shouldn't be surprised uh, hearing comet experts say that it must be a comet, because just like AI systems uh, uh, that uh, uh, are saying things based on the training data sets, uh, the same is true about comet experts. They were trained on data sets that involve only comets. So whatever they see in the sky, they will say it's a comet. Uh, even suppose there is a spacecraft or uh, an object that maneuvers uh, without any cometary tail. They would argue it's a dark comet. In other words, a comet where you don't see the gas and dust around it. That's what they said about Oumuamua, which exhibited a non-gravitational acceleration. This was the first interstellar object discovered back in 2017. And the comet experts said, it's still a comet. It's a dark comet, even though we don't see the signatures of a comet, which is gas and dust around it. So the point is, they are just like AI systems. They are trained on comets, and they will say anything in the sky is comets, including spacecraft could be called dark comets, because you don't see a cometary tail and they can maneuver and have non-gravitational acceleration. So my point is that um, we should just be guided uh, by curiosity and the humility to learn what this object is, rather than the arrogance of expertise. Well, Abby, uh, waiting for more answers, uh, I would like to ask you about uh, some of your last uh, reports uh, in Medium. You are becoming very famous, uh, Abby. Uh, did asteroid 3 Atlas just disintegrate near the Sun? Is this true? Sorry, what? Uh, can you repeat? Yeah, the 3 Atlas uh, just disintegrate near the Sun. Oh. Uh, is true this, uh, this report? Are, are true this, the reports? I haven't seen, uh, uh, where did you get that information? Some, I, uh, some pages, uh, some media talking about this, uh, that the three Ayatlas uh, pass oh, okay. uh, very so, near, uh, near of the yeah. sun and it disintegrate. Yeah. Well, that's uh, potentially based on what I said before, where I said that uh, if it's a natural comet, then uh, the amount of mass loss that uh, is required to power the jets that we saw coming out uh, implies a, a very large surface area, potentially, of fragments. But that, this is just in case it is a natural comet. We haven't seen in any image multiple fragments as of yet, as far as I know, unless uh, something new was discovered today, I have to check. But until today, we have not seen multiple components, fragments, in the images of 3 I Atlas. AB, uh, we know that 3 Atlas uh, has sent its first signal to, to the Earth. Uh, what does this discovery mean uh, for the scientific community? Well, uh, if we uh, receive a technological signal in the form of a radio signal, or we see some artificial lights, or we see the heat of an engine that uh, is providing much more power than expected from sunlight impinging on the surface of an object, then we would know that uh, we are dealing with uh, a technological civilization that is far more advanced than we are because uh, the biggest rocket that we produce this starship, which is uh, smaller than 100 meters, uh, smaller than a football field. This object is the size of a city, and we don't have the technologies as of now to launch such a big thing to space, especially not interstellar space. So we will have a long uh, learning experience trying to figure out what this is. But of course, if it happens to be a natural object, uh, it's still surprising that it's so big. We will have to understand what are the astrophysical factories that produced this kind of a big object made mostly of carbon dioxide, if it is natural. Uh, and moreover, why was it sent in uh, the plane of the planets around the sun? Uh, perhaps there is some astrophysical reason for that. But um, we have to explain those anomalies. We can't just say it's a comet and that's it, case closed. We need to figure out why it has these unusual properties because we must be missing something. We are missing something and uh, we are waiting for the 
eh, for the NASA, eh, as the government sat down and eh, do you expect NASA could release these images of the three Atlas? Eh, we know you are pressuring eh, about this. You are pressing. We were, uh, yeah. Thanks to Representative Anna Paulina Luna, uh, there was a letter sent uh, from Congress to NASA asking for the images that were taken by the high-rise uh, camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter on October 3rd, when uh, uh, 3i Atlas came within 29 million kilometers from Mars. And these are the highest resolution images we have in principle. Uh, with 30 kilometers per pixel resolution. However, because of the government shutdown in the US, these images were not released yet uh, for bureaucratic reasons. They exist on the computers of some people, uh, and those people are not necessarily government employees. They're, however, um, there is some bureaucratic reason within NASA that during the shutdown, they're not allowed to release it. Any image related to 3 i Atlas must be approved. Uh, and that's different from other images taken by uh, the high-rise camera that were released uh, even today. There is a new image released by the same camera. But things related to 3 Atlas have to be approved by the headquarters of NASA, which was closed uh, because of the shutdown. So my hope is that the shutdown will end uh, within a day or so. And then after that, uh, shortly after that, we'll have access to those images and see what they mean. I mean, they were taken 40 days ago. So that's a long time. It's a, an unwanted delay uh, for science because uh, we want to get as much information as we have on this object because it will affect uh, future observations that we make. But um, gladly, the uh, shutdown is about to end, so we will get uh, a resolution to this saga. Waiting uh, for this uh, resolution, uh, AB, what is, uh, what is the NASA hiding? And uh, do you understand that, that some people uh, doesn't trust uh, the NASA or whatever, uh, whatever uh, that was published about these three ayatollahs in, in the future? If they say that is a comment, do you understand that people uh, doesn't trust them? Yeah, I'm not sure why they do two things. One, uh, have a clear opinion uh, telling the public what this object is. When the public wants to see the data, that whatever it says, uh, the public is curious. And, you know, science is work in progress. And uh, it's not uh, uh, constructed on bold statements by bureaucrats or administrators. Uh, the other thing is these images were blocked by bureaucracy uh, and the and and the politics of the day. And again, that should not happen because science should be given priority over bureaucracy. Uh, if uh, the images exist, uh, someone within NASA could have said, uh, for the benefit of science, let's share them with scientists. They don't need to go out to the news media necessarily. They can just share it to the scientific community. And that doesn't involve much work. Uh, it doesn't involve uh, money because we're talking about data that exists on computers and you just share it publicly on a website so that scientists can use it. That's uh, basically what I'm saying. And uh, unfortunately, in big organizations, uh, there is often uh, a lot of bureaucracy that controls and, uh, and dominates over scientific considerations. And I wish that someone up there in the administration uh, of NASA would have uh, decided to, for the benefit of science, to release that data. Waiting for the NASA, uh, Abi, I would like to ask you about uh, Michio Kaku. Uh, he's talking about the three Ayatlas, uh, he's talking about, about you. Uh, what is your answer for Michio Kaku? Yeah, so Michio Kaku, including uh, as well uh, Brian Cox or Neil deGrasse Tyson, these are um, people who are commentators. They talk about uh, science uh, from uh, the point of view of someone from the outside looking at it that knows the details, but are, they are not practitioners of science. It's the difference between, let's say, soccer players on the field and commentators on the bench that are talking about the game. And uh, of course, the one difference between soccer players on the field and commentators is that only the soccer players can score a goal. The commentators can say whatever they want, but they are not on the field. And so Michio Kaku is just talking about uh, this object. He didn't write a scientific paper about it. And the same is true for Brian Cox or Neil deGrasse Tyson. They are just commentators. 
Uh, I'm not sure when they wrote the last scientific paper, but definitely they haven't published anything about 3i Atlas. I'm uh, doing the scientific work with students, postdocs, trying to figure out what the data suggests, and uh, I'm engaged in the actual inquiry. And the public is very curious because it's just like a detective story. And suppose there is a detective on the scene collecting claim, collecting uh, clues and trying to interpret clues. But then there is someone looking at the detective and making statements. Uh, who would you rather follow? The person who makes statements from a, a distance about what the detective is doing? Or would you rather follow the detective as uh, the clues are coming along, trying to figure out what is going on. I mean, it's obvious, and that's why uh, the public is so excited about Free Atlas, because it shows how scientific work is done. It's not done by making statements. It's not done by bureaucrats, not by commentators. It's done by people who collect the clues, collect the evidence, and then make sense out of them. And of course, when we don't have enough clues, there could be difference of opinions. That should be allowed. Science should not block all opinions except for one, uh, which is the tendency of experts, because they claim we know the answer. But the way science is done is to have a sense of humility and say, OK, let's imagine two possibilities and one of them is less likely. Okay, but we will collect enough data so that we will show that the, the second possibility, which we regard as unlikely, is incorrect. And then if uh, the data shows something else, you say, okay, I was wrong, and you learn something new. So that's the way science is done. It's a learning experience. It's work in progress. And all these commentators and bureaucrats who are trying to uh, you know, put a face to the public in which they know what it is and they uh, are the ones to tell the public what it is. You know, that's, that's not the right approach to doing science. The last question, uh, A.B., you are becoming famous. Uh, I was talking about uh, your reports in, in Medium. Uh, how are you coping with, with the fame? Um, it, it doesn't change anything for me. I was always like that. I would always, uh, it's just that now the subject is of interest to the public. It's not about me, it's about 3i Atlas. And uh, I still wash the dishes at home uh, every day. And in fact, uh, the dishwasher just broke at my home. So now I have to do it by hand until we get a new dishwasher. So yesterday I called the, uh, the company to order a replacement to the dishwasher. And the person on the other side of the phone call, uh, I've never spoken with this person, I don't know who he is, but uh, he recognized my voice. And he said, are you Avi Loeb? And I said, yes. And he said, I recognize you because I follow everything you say on television, on uh, podcasts. So he knew me just by my voice. <laughs> and uh, uh, then he asked me after that, he said, it's a clear, it's a great honor. Uh, what is the status of 3i Atlas? Before I made my order, he was very curious. So it just shows how interested the public is, how widespread is that interest, and how incredible is this opportunity to get the public engaged and, and interested in science. I just got an email an hour ago from a mother, uh, a professional, who said that my daughter now uh, wants to be a scientist and uh, she was talking with me about it and wants to move and pursue an academic career. And, you know, every story like that, and this is, uh, I heard the, a, a lot of those, um, is giving me the reward that I really want. It's not that uh, my name is recognized. It's the fact that I can excite, inspire young kids and also adults to appreciate the value of science because that's the only way for us to learn new things by searching evidence and not by believing stories that bureaucrats and commentators tell us. Well, Avi, congratulations uh, once again for your success. Uh, thanks for being here with, with us in Authors TV. It's a pleasure having you here and waiting for you again to, to talk about this three Atlas. Thanks for being with us again, Avi. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you.